It's time. It's time. Speaking of tattoos, let's bring Tig on. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on a minute. Gonna, let's get rid of some of the furniture off the screen here. Good morning to you, Tig. How are you? Hi. Bon dia. Bon dia. Have you recovered yet, Carl? What from you? From you being here last time? Yeah. No, not really. I'm, 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 a, I'm a little concerned <laughs> about what you might be sharing with with us oh. the, uh, this this morning. So, so let's yeah, check yeah. check in with you first. How, how are you doing? How, how's your part of Portugal? All right, actually, hot, of course, but at least we get the wind here, so that's fine by me. It's you all know, that feijoada. Through. All that is it feijoada, a local speciality, and that's why you get all no, that. No, not that sort of wind, Carl. Okay, I, <laughs> starting as we mean to go on, lightening the mood already. <laughs> Will you say this? Are you Silver Coast then, with a breeze? Is that where you are? No, I'm Algarve. Oh, okay. I'm Algarve. So, but I'm I'm West Algarve, so we get the breeze. And and a friend has just okay. been telling me how she went to Albufeira yesterday, and I mean, it's just the air's just still there. You get nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just oh no, not in this. And at least yeah. you know you open your back door and your front door, and the wind just comes straight through. It's brilliant. Yeah, how lovely. And the the Western Algarve, I think you you just yeah. said uh, yes, a blustery Sagres. If you go to Sagres, you 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 get a bit of of a breeze there, don't you? Very refreshing. Uh, and um, shout out, oh yeah, uh, Albufeira. We I saw yesterday that Emma Belter, our friend Emma Belter from the Belters, she said she's on on Facebook. I think just back from playing in the devil's armpit. So I think it probably was quite hot in Albufeira and quite yeah. difficult conditions to perform in. Uh, shout out to you from Capricorn Chris, uh, who was uh, keen to have you on the show and take some of the credit uh, for you being here, Tig. So. What's new? I mean, th there might be things left over from last time uh, that, um, you know, with that incredible uh, amount of information you shared. Anything to resolve from last time? Um, I think there was one, but it may have been resolved anyway, which was okay. um, there was something about citizenship that I couldn't remember that I wanted to say. And I was yes. thinking, what on earth was it? And then suddenly, of course, once I'd left, I'd, oh, yeah, I remember what it was now. Often like that. And it was... <laughs> But who was the guy? I'm ever so sorry. I'm useless with names. Who was the guy that had got citizenship that you had on? Can you remember? Michael, wasn't it? Michael Heron. Because he, no. he was... So he was he was going for citizenship. It was the other guy who'd been in the armed forces. Oh, who was... I don't remember now. Remember oh, exactly. Carl. Carl Hyde. Carl Hyde. Carl, yes. Carl, um, yep. oh, yes. That's right, because he was married to a Portuguese woman, wasn't he? That was right. That's right, yes, it was Carl yeah, Hyde. And Michael's right. going for it. Michael will be here on Wednesday of this week, and we could check in with him about his process. But it was Carl Hyde who was on the screen. Because because yeah. we were all a little bit agog, weren't we? Even Carl uh, on that, yeah. that morning. And Michael, I think, was there as well. And Bobby, yeah, it was a, it was a real eye-opener. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was because, I mean, I certainly know that it was something that was addressed with the Portuguese government about with citizenship that if you'd been a member of the armed forces that they actually turned you down the British armed forces because you'd sworn your allegiance to queen or king and country therefore you weren't allowed wow. to have Portuguese citizenship but from what Carl was saying because he'd been in the armed forces he he actually managed to get his citizenship whether it's different because he was married to a Portuguese citizen, I don't know. But certainly about five years ago, because I was at a meeting and um, with one of the, the Portuguese ministers, and it, it was a subject that was brought up, that citizenship was turned down because of people, UK nationals actually having been, you know, you, you well know, you, you've sworn you'll fight for somebody else. You're not coming here. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Because... There's all sorts of stuff like that that I keep coming across, yeah. And so... you might say the Portuguese are a little bit more relaxed about criminal records than they are about being in the army because uh, that, that doesn't preclude you from coming to Portugal, does it? It's some criminal... um, don't so... know for citizenship. Don't know. Right. Okay. Well, maybe if they pledge themselves to a life of crime, they might not be accepted. Yeah, don't keep that off any visa applications. <laughs> Make a tattoo. <laughs> yes, your gang, keep your gang tattoos covered up when uh, any any important interviews. So, what's what's yeah. new, Tig? Since since we last saw you in in this, um, uh, it, I mean, what's... basically, what's going on is it's unfolding before our eyes, isn't it? And what, what yeah. the, the, I suppose the general idea from speaking to you last time is it hadn't been thought through very well. No big surprise there. 
And typically with these monumental changes, there are things that you could, you're only going to find out about once the process is on the move. And in that, it's in that situation. That's where I was, I think, mostly agog, is how yeah. those massive changes affect people in a very individual and sometimes painful way. Yeah, it, it, I think I think the thing that, that shocked you was because, um, I mean, how long have you been here, Carl? Uh, I, sh I will have been here six years in, in uh, September. Yeah, um, and I think that, that, that sort of makes a difference because you're more used to the systems, you're more used to the process um, and whatever. But I think that... I think the difficulty was, was it was a new system for everybody. And because it was a new law, the withdrawal agreement, um, I mean, w w there were so many difficulties and still are across the EU for UK nationals. There still are. Um, from voting, from health care, from payments for health insurance. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, and I think that if you if you were already in the systems, like you'd already got health care because you'd been here six years, you'd, you'd registered yeah. for it and whatever, that wasn't an issue. It was more an issue for people that were that, the health care particularly, for people that had just come over trying to get in before the Brexit deadline, you know? Yeah. Um, and then they just couldn't, they would just weren't allowed health care. And seriously, I still have families who do not have health care and have been here three or four years. Wow. OK. And you mentioned that uh, you've been in meetings with government ministers. This is the level you're working at, is it? You are summoned from time to time. To... Yeah, every so often. Yeah. And that sort of the embassy will ask me for, for reports and stuff, you know, to, to say what is the latest thing. And, and I think last time we were saying, wasn't there, that I'd just done a report for the EU Commission because, again, the, get into trouble you see you get me into trouble carl all the time i don't mean to i really don't mean to <laughs> because the last time i did um just just before i'd come on i think two days before i just done the latest report on the situation in portugal for the eu commission because that they, they, they every so often they ask for updates i give it to somebody else it's then presented i don't care as long as our issues are highlighted who does it I couldn't give a monkeys yeah um so I did that, and and I mean one. And do you remember I said to you that the Portuguese government, at, at, all the way through this, they kept saying that we'd get our cards soon, yes. that it would be soon, and that soon just turned into years where people couldn't get healthcare. They were being detained at airports, and and that's when your jaw started to drop. And yeah, yeah, yeah. keep picking it up. Yes. Um, and But one of the other things that has been absolutely consistent with the Portuguese government as well is that they have said there aren't any problems. It's being rolled out fine. It's, and no, it's coming. It's OK. There's no issues consistently for years. Well, of course, that has just been absolutely categorically not true. And it's been, that has been the consistent thing is the untruths about it. So what do people do in that situation? So a couple of things. I want to find out what redress or, I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? If you do find yourself at a, a, a customs, not a customs, an immigration point somewhere in the Schengen mm -hmm. area, and you find yourself out of favour, so to speak, in that yeah. situation, you're very vulnerable, aren't you? And so there's probably not a lot you can do in that sort of situation, apart from follow the guidance you're being given by that particular country and then take it up from there once you've been deported or whatever. That's basically what happened, isn't it, to some of the people we were talking about. But what, what uh, in, before that happens, in these situations where people haven't been given their uh, medical uh, cards or the ability to get medical treatment, what's, what is being done and what can they do about it? Is there anything? Talk to me. Right. And then, but then what do you do? I mean, you, you're finding yourself at these high level meetings, are you, where you can say to, directly to the face of the person who once said, don't worry, it's going to happen soon. And it's definitely happening. You can say, well, actually, no, it's not. Is that is that where we're at? Not quite. I don't quite go. I don't go directly, but I go around it. I right. go to, 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 to other people. And, and it's like I said, you know, I work with the embassy and, and between us, we try and sort it out. Yes. Um, I mean, hopefully the detentions at airports have now stopped, hopefully, yes. because, it, and it was like I said, we'd got, um, it, it was at the border controls. The books hadn't got in. The, the 
interim paperwork that the Portuguese government SCF had issued. And, we're, and I'm hoping that that has now been resolved. I mean, if I start getting panic phone calls again, I'll know it hasn't. But I mean, but basically, I mean, what has happened is the people that still do only have the QR code, they're, they're, they're basically, um, they're, they're just not traveling. Right. So there is something there, you can do. Right? Is, there, is there some sort of checklist or um, somewhere you can go to find out that you are at least as up to speed as you possibly can be? Because I suspect that's what's gone on for some of these folks. They've assumed that the paperwork they've got is good to go and will allow them to go about the business in the way that they intended. But then they discover that they have not got the right paperwork. How do people, just, just so that we can help people this morning, Tig, how do people make sure they've got the most up-to-date piece of paper when traveling around uh, the rest of Schengen or the rest of the world? It's, it's Schengen, really. Okay. It's, it's your issue. Um, because you haven't got a visa, because you don't need one, because you're a resident in an, in an EU member state. Right. So you don't need a visa. Yeah, allegedly. Technically, yes. Yeah, technically, um, I I in theory, um, the only thing you can do, you see, the thing is, is the QR code that we've been given is the legitimate legal paperwork that you need. It's just that on, uh, as you get to the borders, it's not accepted right. because in the book of the of the documents from all the countries that are accepted. Um, the Schengen area border guards were checking it and it wasn't there. So therefore, you're not telling the truth. Therefore, we're going to, you've overstayed in the Schengen, put you on the plane. Yes. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Okay. But you, you think the worst of that is behind us and why is that? Hope so. Why is that? It's because basically lots of people have been issued with their withdrawal agreement biometric cards. Okay. So that's and state of the art. That's what you that's ideally what you need yes. now is to have one of those. I have one of those. Um and um I I was gonna say I look forward to using it, but I kinda of don't just in case one of these other No, no, you you're you're absolutely right. fine with the withdrawal agreement biometric card because of course what the border guards were expecting was the withdrawal agreement biometric card. Everybody else had them. Yes. Why haven't you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're, you're, you know, a, 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 you know, this is years ago now. You, of course, you've got. No, we haven't. This is what we've been given. So you've got people who've done everything perfectly legally. Yep. Then we're going, we're going to sort of you, you going to traveling, and getting detained. Yes, not good, not good. Okay, Squire of the Shire's lightening the mood here. The only single market I was glad of leaving was Tinder. <laughs> you can use that if you want, to Tig, in your oh, that's the, cool. I like British that. in Portugal group on Facebook. Now, this is where people can stay in touch with you, isn't it? Yeah. Is a British in yeah. Portugal. Uh, sorry, yeah, British in Portugal. Now, uh, when I was reading the details around this, um, I, I realised that it's part of the broader coalition, I think you call it, of British people in all of Europe. How yeah. I'm guessing that although there are, have been these terrible problems for some, some people in Portugal, people are having far worse problems in other parts of Europe. Is that right? We, it, it, I think <laughs> Portugal was the worst. Really? I think across the despite, EU. despite our long-standing relationship, or is it because of, did we assume too many things? Um, I don't know if assumptions were made so much as um, SEF just didn't have the staff. Okay, all right. Yeah, they so just that... didn't have the staff, and of course, and they and they do what we all know Portuguese people do is, oh, it's okay, no, it'll be soon, it's okay, you know that, and the way they do very calmly and, and very kindly, no, it's okay, don't worry, it'll be here soon, and of yeah. course, but it just didn't. Yeah, it okay. just didn't. I am surprised and gutted to hear that to some extent that Portugal is ranking among the worst countries when it comes to Brits. Uh, uh, this is a bit too emotive to say stranded in Europe, but you get the gist. Uh, Pete says, I yeah. think Tig is right. It is the consistent inconsistency. There you go. That's a good phrase, isn't it? Of Portuguese proxy. Wife and I apply for driving license at the same time. Mine arrived three weeks later, two and a half years old. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Yeah, people have it. And you see, and that was the other problem. You see, with IMT is, um, is, is, is what they did with the driving licenses is suddenly the driving license institution decided that, that Brits weren't allowed to renew or have new driving licenses if they didn't have their withdrawal agreement biometric card. I've had oh. people lose businesses. And people not, you know, say that they were drivers 
couldn't drive, lost their jobs. Yikes. Okay. It's, it's, I cannot tell you how bad this has been. It is, it, people have lost businesses, they've lost driving licenses, they've lost jobs, they've lost premises. I, I, it, it's been horrific. They couldn't get, they've got pe- that relatives or themselves that have got illnesses that are, you know, potentially fatal, terminal. Yes, but they because can't Swift didn't issue these flipping cards, which legally they were absolutely obliged to do. Yes. Uh, as a little aside, and we'll come to you, James, on a, a driving license update in just a moment, um, because you have a story to tell on that. I was listening to uh, a, a phone in last night about the benefits of a four day week. It's being piloted, I think, in the UK. And it's certainly not, not a new idea that. Um, some people might do a four-day week, and it's actually improved efficiency in some places, and others, it had no notice, no difference has been noticed. And I thought to myself, what would happen if Seth went on to four instead of five days a week? <laughs> Not a good idea, Dig. I mean, they need something. Don't they? There's two it's parts to it. You know, there is their morale, isn't there, which needs which needs some help. <laughs> Uh, they because they are demoralized as a group of people so they do need something on a compassionate human level and they need to get their act sorted out f- for sure uh from what we can tell from what you're sharing with us uh when you join us go sorry go on i'm just gonna say it sounds like a top-down issue no, no it, I, I just think i mean it's... that's it yeah Go on, I can't, hear, I can't hear you. Sorry. We, we, we went into a bit of a delay there, uh, but you, yeah. you were going to say something about Seth. I, I, I'm, I, yeah. It sounds like I'm not helping by suggesting they take a four day week. No, not at all. <laughs> um, it's if you haven't got the staff, you haven't got the staff. Yeah. Okay, you know, so- it is, if they, they haven't got the people to do the work that, that they already have. And I mean, one of the things that has, has been raised recently, um, certainly with me and certainly at the EU level, is that SEF isn't fit for purpose. And I actually agree. Mm-hmm. It isn't fit. When you see so many people are having such a torrid time with them, and they are. I mean, every it isn't just Brits. It's every nationality is going through this. Yeah. Every nationality. And I mean, North Americans, when they've been coming in, because they're, they're new third country nationals, um, they're getting seen quite quickly. Okay. Um, and yeah, but uh, otherwise, once you're in the system, oh my goodness, it's been a nightmare. It's a okay. nightmare. For, I was I was talking to a guy the other day, um, a South African, and and he's like, he's been here two years, and I don't know there because theirs, of course, is different as well because. South Africa isn't a trusted country, as in, you know, sort of like in immigration um, so much. Um, but he's had a terrible time, he and his family. Terrible time with Seth. Right. And, it, and, and it's because of, uh, you know, they just haven't got the staffing levels that, that meet the requirements of the amount of work that they've got. And I get it. But that then leaves people literally in danger of... of losing their lives and i can't i i will never countenance and agree with that i can't do that no i to- i totally get that and we'll return to what can be done about it if anything in just a moment after we've had a driving okay. license update from our north american here well there's not a whole lot to it other than the the long detailed story of of just fi- figuring out what was required to, you know, what documents were needed. I, I have said the bureaucracy of Portugal is one of needing verification of verification um, because there's no such thing as one person says, yeah, who's qualified to says, yes, this is authentic. You need 15 people to say that the one who said it was is auth- authorized to say it was, was authorized by somebody else. There's this pile of paperwork that says verification is the thing. That's what created the issue for me in two different countries. Mm. Portugal had its set of requirements. California had its set of requirements. And they didn't always match the meanings of things like uh, apostille were different. <laughs> you know, so what do you mean by when you say I need an apostille? What document do you need? That was not clear. All these things, all this confusion between the two systems and then this need for multiple layers and this increase the requirements on the other side 
And then you add into it that IMT and the consulate in San Francisco had different requirements for the license or documentation of the license. And this was all after they said, okay, never mind. If you've got a, a, a active legitimate license, you can use that in Portugal. And then they said, unless you're over 65, then you have to do it this old fashioned way. And that made no sense to me. That was just ageist in my view. It's like, what? Why everyone except those people of a certain age? Why? And that creates all those problems. And then IMT changes their requirements. And I was just behind the changes. I said, okay, here's what they need. Send it in. That's not what we need. We need this. Ah, okay, here's this. No, we don't need that anymore. We need this. So every time I was sending them what they said they needed, they changed the requirements. Well, I, I say every time. It happened three times. So three times everything I sent them was sent back with no real explanation other than this is not what we required. So that was the process of just getting my IMT appointment mm. so that I could make the exchange. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty standard stuff, to be honest. Yes. And it's so frustrating for you as, as it is for all of us. Um, I think the, the, the additional problem, I mean, like you say, there was a change. So what you also have is half the staff knowing about the, the change and the other half not knowing about the change. And one of, I think, one of the things that certainly I have come across, and, and I mean literally thousands of times, is that it, it, you could go to one camera office and they would tell you one thing. You could go to another camera office and they would tell you another. And literally because the staff were just not aware of what the, their own rules were. And in the end, what I actually had to do was put out, um, I put out an actual video in the end, and I did um, like, like documents. You you do this, 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 and this, and 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 I mean, literally, people were going into cameras all over Portugal, going, "Tick said this," you know. And it's, <laughs> oh, that woman again! <laughs> and, you know, oh, and you're was, that Tig. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, I, and I mean, it was it was. I found this quite amusing actually, because somebody came back to me and they said, um, they said. Right, they've turned me down. They won't let me get my city, uh, uh, my residency. Absolutely ridiculous. They're fully entitled to it. They've got all the documentation and whatever. And I went, right, and they said, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and say, you sent me. I went, ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, well, and they said. Okay, well, okay, 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 here you go. Don't, nah, don't bring in the TIG. <laughs> no, what I'm going to do, all right, then, what I'll do is I'll say, you said this. I said, well, that's okay. I'll let you do that. That's okay. <laughs> And um, anyway, so they went stomping off to the camera office and they went, Tig James wrote this and said, this is what I have to do and I'm not leaving until I get my resident. They went, oh, okay then, and gave it up. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's a good strategy. And uh, we're thinking yeah. now of um, perhaps some Tig James merchandise, where a T-shirt with your face on it. So when people go into Seth, they can wear a T-shirt or pens with Tig Says. You might throw darts at you, though. You never Tig know. Says. Like, oh, hashtag God, hashtag Tig Says, I think, is, is the new campaign. Oh, no. and, and, and that's what I'd like to conclude with, Tig, if possible. I mean, you will be back because this is, uh, you know, a, a great uh, opportunity for us to find out from you what's going on, particularly for the post-Brexit Brits. But I think there's an overlap, isn't there? When we're talking about Seth, other people are experiencing Seth from a different angle. So it's useful yeah. from, from a number of angles and especially useful yeah. for the post-Brexit Brits. I want to know what we can do about these things. Um, it's great that you made a video. Um, where can people get help when, they're, when they find themselves suddenly out in the cold? And before you answer that, I mean, I, I have my own story of this situation where it's so sort of discretionary and grey and subjective. When we were in a very hot Leria Seth office one day, um, we had, I think it was me, Mrs. M and two kids in a very hot office. We queued up for ages um, and it was quite a tense atmosphere. People from all over the world in, in the waiting room, not quite knowing what was going on. We were quite new to Portugal at the time and we'd been sent already from pillar to post and we had this appointment in Leria. And we sat in front of this uh, lady there and it, there seemed to be a little bit of an impasse. I don't know if other people recognize this, where you sit there 
and you don't know what to do next and they don't say anything and you just it's just like it's re this it's a deafening silence and an impasse and then a chap came who looked like a high up and suddenly it goes into black and white like a scene from the netflix show gloria and a man who doesn't introduce himself comes and stands behind the woman we're dealing with and sort of looks down on the paperwork and it's all still quiet and we're we've shut up by this point trying to speak in french using a translator on our phones and stuff and this guy is standing there doesn't say hello or anything he's just standing watching the room and watching standing over the desk that we're at and he whispers something in this woman's ear and it suddenly starts moving again as if he just makes her on the spot <laughs> discretionary yeah. yeah you know that situation I, th I think others will as well and, then, and it just started moving again like our lives in that moment or the future of our our, our career in Portugal, as it were, was just dealt with by a guy's say so with a whisper in oh, the ear of this I'll woman. I'll tell you the next time I'm on, I'll yeah. tell you the story where I thought I was going to get arrested at the Royal <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> Can't wait. I really did. Can't I did. wait. I did it twice. I'll tell you really? the next one though. Yeah. Oh my but, goodness. Um, you you so were saying we what can we do, Tig? What 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 when um, people people are worried. Or if people have got a tangible situation, what can they do? That's where my mind goes with this. There's only two things you can do, and that's either contact me or the embassy. Right, okay. Because, Seth, you, you, you cannot get an answer. You cannot yeah. get an answer. And certainly if, if you're in an emergency situation, like we talked about last time, um, it's just horrendous. Yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's and, and of course, bearing in mind that the embassies work 9-5 as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. And <laughs> it's it's it, it's when that sort of stuff happens. Um, and it, and I think it was Bobby, wasn't it? Oh, you know, make you make phone calls. And I said, I, I did. I did. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, even even the embassy, one of the countries was Germany. And the, the, it, it, I'm, it's a very long story short. The German embassy was contacted the British embassy in Germany was contacted and they rang the airport and it made no difference. Wow. Because the paperwork says, and that, wow. that was the issue. Yeah. But can I just give one little, there's, 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 can I just get, have I got time to give two little things? That, oh, I that think that's, people? Absolutely. We only have you once a month, so please make the most of it. Okay. Um, one of the questions that I'm asked quite regularly is that if you actually get a new passport, do you need to inform Seth? Really? And the answer is no. Oh, okay. Why would you need to do that? Oh, cause because the numbers changed. Because the numbers changed. So right. people think, oh my goodness, it's, it's not, no, you don't. I mean, and I think, could you imagine if you did? Yes. Do you want to. Work that will cause Seth. I mean, yeah. you know, and you don't have to do that. And the other thing, I, I tell you what, we'll leave it if it's okay. We'll leave it till next time. Yeah, <laughs> Tig says all of it. Um, the um, the other thing is talk about the Etias that's coming in. I've heard about this. This is yeah. this is a valid. Is this a third party validation for travel in Schengen? It's the it's the third country um, visa that people will need that live in the UK to travel around the, the, the Schengen. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And, and who's okay. doing this? Who is Etias? Etias, is, that's the name of the document that's going to come in. Okay. And who's doing it? Is it, is it's, it, uh, it's the EU, isn't it? Because right. it's, the, it's the document to say that you're actually allowed in the Schengen area. Right. Okay. So, but we need to talk about that because, of course, you've got UK nationals living in the Schengen area already. What do they do? Yeah, we do definitely need to talk about that. Okay. And I heard, I saw on, um, it might have even been in British, in Portugal, was uh, how some people are getting concerned now that when they arrive just for a holiday within their 90-day period in Portugal, they're going to have to prove that they have an outward ticket or an onward ticket or return ticket and sufficient funds to stay in Portugal. Does, have you, has this come across your desk as well? I don't think so. No, no, I haven't heard that. Simply because um, it, it, once you're in the Schengen area, it, it's, it's freedom of movement, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So you don't, it's not like the States or, or Canada where you have to have a ticket to prove that you're leaving or, or whatever. It isn't like that. It's similar. The Etias is similar 
mm-hmm. to what they have in the in, in the states ad- admittedly but no because it's it's the eu you could you could fly from germany couldn't you or france or spain yeah as long as you because it's 90 days within that's the other thing that needs to be made very clear because people are still very confused about this it's 90 days within the schengen area not per country right so if you come for if you come and stay in portugal for 89 days and then you want to go visit Spain, you can only spend a day there. In a yeah. and day. Also, you better be traveling on that day. Yeah, and the other thing is, that's, that's what I was just going to go on to, yeah. is um, people get really confused about the days. The thing is, as soon as you put your big toe on EU soil, Schengen area soil, that's day one. Right. Can you it's- try the Portuguese um, approach on this and say, ah, but that is it working days? Or calendar days. <laughs> you, you can try all you like, but it won't work. It's, it's the so day your toe touches for the ground. That's, you know, that's that's it. With, with appeals, with appeals, they say, "Oh yeah, it's not calendar days; it's it's business days." So we've actually got much longer to sort that out. But people actually get that they they that, and I understand sort of the mentality of it. But people say, "Well, I'm going on holiday to Portugal." For two weeks, therefore, I've only spent fourteen days there. No, you haven't, because you just actually you just travelled all the way through France, and then you went into Spain, and then you came here. So you're in the Schengen area. So those three days you spent travelling, and three days are another six days. Oh no! Okay, thank you for being here today, Teague. We've got a few comments. <laughs> And you have to be out by the 90th day. It's not like, oh, I can leave yes. on the 90th day. You have to be gone by the 90th it's, day. Well, it's, it's 90 days. So you you sort of like you have to make sure on the 90th you're out. Yes. Because you can't go you can't go over to midnight. You can't go one minute past midnight. Flight delay. Way. Oops. Yeah. Oh, word. Just past you, midnight. You, yeah. Okay. And and the other thing, very quickly, that I'll, I'll quickly say is, please, people, do not mess about with this. This is very serious stuff. If you overstay, it isn't just, and I, I think we meant, did I mention this before? Can't remember about the penalties that if you overstay. What? <laughs> what happens? Obviously not. Um, I have, off the top of my head, an example. Okay. People, because they're loaded... I wish I was, I'm not, but there you go, have said to me, um, oh, what's the fine? And I'm going like, you're not quite getting this. And it's because, yes, you'll get fined, and you'll get fined a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're not talking like 100 euros here. You're talking over 1,000 euros, whatever, for a lot of people. that is, it's, But that's not the worst part. It really, really isn't. Getting the fine is not an issue because you can – borrow it or whatever the issue is is that then what happens is you're then put on a plane say you're leaving faro and you've overstayed you've been here a hundred days you've overstayed they'll stick you on a plane but what they then do is they then enter you into their system the schengen area system which name again has evaded me but their sis sis or something anyway something like that and then what actually happens is is you're banned from the schengen area for at least six months Okay, and but that again isn't the worst of it because because you've actually had a ban, therefore you're seen as somebody who isn't trustworthy. When you then want to, after the six months, want to fly back into the Schengen area or drive back in, it's totally up to the country that you then enter in through whether or not they'll let you in because you're not trustworthy to not overstay again. So they can quite legitimately say, no, sorry, you're not coming in. Yeah. Even if you have all the paperwork you need because you're in you, the system. It, it, it's like, it, it, isn't it? It's like going for a job, you know, as a bank teller and you've got a previous conviction for stealing. Yes. Okay, well, you've cheered me right up this morning, Tig. Always <laughs> I've made you really happy now, haven't I? Always <laughs> great. No, don't go, don't go just yet because we have a few, okay. few comments to share. Oh, okay. Uh, that's if you can stick around for a bit longer, both you and James, because I'm going to go to James for a final thought. My, my, you know, my go-to with this is what can you do? Uh, it's that blokey fix-it kind of mentality rather than just listening and saying that's terrible, which it is. I'm going straight yeah. to like, what can we do to fix this? And it's, we're, it's work in progress, clearly. Uh, yeah. Tig, I'm just down the road from you in Raposeda. I had a lovely few meals in Sagres this weekend. The Porco de Preto was off the chart on a positive note. 
Um, Gary's finally found, this is not connected, I don't think anyway, unless there's a Schengen rule against this. Uh, I have finally found my way into the pool in a scene reminiscent of an African wildlife documentary. I find around dusk the water is nice, even though I swim like a bag of cement. Well, good for you. Um, I think this is um, I, I, tongue in cheek. Yeah, I, I Real feel... winner. Okay, so the Portuguese government isn't perfect, right? It's true, and it's all relative. There, you, we do have to say yeah. that because we we can comment here or add this yeah. um, little uh, uh, the, a further gong for Portugal here that just came in over the weekend. Best country to retire to with a score of seven point eight three out of ten. I think probably the two point one seven is all to do with Seth. <laughs> It's not 10 out of 10, maybe there from what was being said um, this morning. Uh, further comments coming in. Um, oh, yeah, there's a bit of to and fro in about inflation and Brexit. We're probably best not to go into that right now. I think Gary said at least you haven't had your bank account uh, frozen. Or wait oh, that's until that's Nigel account. Farage, isn't it? Is he, is well, he referring to Nigel Farage? He has been debanked or, or debonked or something like that. Um, and uh, However, yes, uh, it's happened to Gemini. My oh, okay. account is shut down because it was a joint account and because William is deceased, the bills are not paid. There is money in the account. Uh, falling foul again there, Gemini, on um, on the Portuguese bureaucracy. Yes, and there is a hack. I mean, it, I, I'm sorry to put it like this, but it, is, it's, it would be too late for you to do this, Gemini. But to stop other people getting in this situation, there is a way around this that I have heard um, where people are locked out of joint accounts in this way, Gemini. But that is an awful situation you find yourself in. And um, if you need any help from our community, expats, Portugal community, do uh, from, from, from well, wherever you can get the help from, I hope you ask uh, if you are struggling with that. Um, you could have a Farage in Faro. That would be ironic. That's the big wince there. Uh, does any country do immigration? Well, I've heard horror stories in the US as well. And that's what I'm saying. It is relative, uh, but that doesn't it make is, it. It, it's, it is relative. And I understand that. I think I think possibly just because I've just dealt with the worst of the worst continually of for years. Of course. And and I I I I you know say that my viewpoint is probably a little bit skewed because of that. Um I I, I but I, and I also know my viewpoint is also very skewed. I hate being lied to. Absolutely yes. despise being and, and I've been lied to by Seth for years and years and years. And I nah. And, and not when you've got people crying on the phone, you know, because no, they're in such a desperate state. No, I can't. Thank no. you for being motivated in this way, Tig, and for helping people. Who find you're welcome. Your you're welcome. And yeah, um, it is relative and it's horrible when it's you it's happening to, of course. That's always yeah. how it works, isn't it, uh, yeah. with, with things in life. I'd rather hear about bureaucratic baloney complaints than tragic crime, political scandals and climate related tragedies that plunge North American news. Well, wait till you've got a better grasp of the language, Suze. Only kidding. Um, but, um, yeah, I get I get your point there. Um, Portugal loves a date on things. They are a real stickler for the date and the stamp as well. I love the fact that at least two departments, we have been told by a bureaucracy to lie about the gate on our forms. Um, the date, maybe. In our area, it all depends on who had given the workers cheese and wine. Scandalous suggestion there, which I'm quickly dis distancing myself from this is good advice isn't it if and i think it refers to the law of three that lord gilchrist was talking about not a real lord if the u.s if you call a company and someone has ridiculous requirements you just keep calling until you get a reasonable person law of averages states that that will happen at some point um copies of a4 documents in triplets signed and witnessed by both great grandparents and a swab of their dna if possible as well get a sack truck and take the filing cabinet with you. That's always good advice. Yeah, good ideas, says Squire of the Shires this morning. Yeah. And it wasn't Seth that was a problem for Lord Gilchrist. It was finances. It's, yeah, and it, you, some people are going to have a great experience in one department and a terrible in the other. Best case scenario, you're going to have a great experience in all of them. I hope, I wish <laughs> for that for you. It totally you. depends, as everybody's saying, on who you get. And I mean, I, I mean, I can't absolutely hand on heart say that the experiences I've personally had and friends have had at the um, Loja de Cidadao in Lagos, fabulous. Yeah, yeah. And we, do, we all have our favourite experiences as well, don't we? Yeah. We and, and I mean, I've walked in there and the staff, they've, they've been fabulous. And it, it's, it, but it's, it's like everything, isn't it? If it's run well, it's run well. And you don't notice. That's right. And you don't notice. 
but uh, no, there, there excellent. is an app that tracks your Schengen days. I wonder who there are. It. Yes, I have to say there are many apps, but be careful with them. Some get it wrong, <laughs> and some they say are connected directly to the World Economic World Economic Foundation database. Only joking. Um, I'm a real lord. He is a oh, he is a real lord. You say that, Lord Gilchrist. Eat all rise, eat well, drink wine, don't rush and swim at dusk. There's my advice, which I think good is a good advice. Place to stop for the time good being. Advice. Apart from last words from you both, I'll come to you uh, as an and finally, James, in just a moment, because I'm sure you'll have a mindful tip or two on how to deal with this when it's all getting to you. But take your last words, please. Last words, be patient. <laughs> James, <laughs> how do we be patient, James? That was two words, though. So, right. you did say words. You said you last words. Right. words. Oh, I, I missed the yes. I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm just cool. reminded of kind of where where I came in with this notion of privilege. Um, a lot, many of our complaints are compl complaints from a position of privilege and. Like we should, this shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be treated this way or whatever. In those cases, you know, I think it's really important that we remind ourselves of this, take a deep breath. And as Tig says, be patient. Now in Tig's case, many of these people are in what feels like and often are life and death kind of situation. So it's a little more, it's a lot tougher. In my situation, the license, that was just a function of convenience. You know, it's like if, if I got it or didn't get it, it really didn't matter that much, except that I couldn't drive, which is one thing I wanted to be able to do to travel. So be mindful of your position. Be mindful of your complaining and find gratitude to replace it if it's reducing the quality of your life experience. We don't need to suffer with our complaints. We can choose differently. <laughs> And I think one of the other things that, and this is just on a personal note for me that has helped me, is that, say, for instance, as we often do here, you know, we're going out to try and achieve one thing that day with bureaucracy. OK, so, so you put it in your diary. Right, I'm going to do that today. So you go. And for me, what's really helped is, right, OK, this is what I've said I'm going to try and achieve today. I have nothing else to do. So it doesn't matter. So you just sit there and the time and I promise I will tell you the story about the water office. I promise. But and I, it was just, you I nearly got arrested. I thought, well, no, I thought I was going to get arrested. I really did. Okay. Well, that's when Tig comes back. And if you Absolutely. see the hashtag campaign, the pens, the T-shirts, hashtag Tig says, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, her influence is spreading deeper and Seth are quaking even more. Um, <laughs> when they think of her. Uh, the other option, of course, is to drink wine, which you can do with us tonight on the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, the Battle of the Biologicos Brancos, uh, two bio whites that we're trying tonight in the hands of Linda and Gary Austin, 8 p.m. this evening. Looking forward to that. We can uh, distract ourselves for a little bit with some um, biological branco, Portuguese style. And finally then, finally, finally, honestly, we will leave it here now, and I just want to, to, to remind you of the Learn About Portugal quiz question for today, uh, which is about the travel industry and uh, Lagos Camera. Shout out to Lagos Camera from uh, Capricorn Chris, by the way. Um, this question then, today's Learn About Portugal quiz question, uh, in the hotel industry, which is estimated at 4.2 billion euros for Portugal in this year, our question is today, how many hotels are there in Portugal who are generating that income and putting the country ninth out of 27 in Europe? UK not included in that anymore. Um, so I should have put EU, not Europe. Uh, please add your answer below. Is it 457 hotels in Portugal? Is it 4,570 or is it 45,700 hotels uh, here in Portugal? Tig, thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to seeing you again already and hearing about how you thought you were going to get arrested in the water offices. And Mindful Migration Monday man himself, James, thank you too. Take Get care, a Tig says T-shirt. Get a Tig Says t-shirt, and we'll see you on the first Monday of next month. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. See you at the Wine Club. Bye for now. Ciao. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings the bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. 
the audience will do so in kind. A little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. 